So welcome to part two. After looking at what is happening in the constellation Cancer, let us also look at what is happening on the other side of the heavens at the celestial silver gate portion where Venus is shining brightly as a morning star, um, where the moon can be found on August 5th, uh, but of course also what is happening with Comet Neowise. So on the other side of the ecliptic, the morning star Venus will be at the celestial silver gate section August 5th, exactly at the tip of the southern horn of Taurus the Bull. The star is known as Zeta Tauri or Al Heka, and in Chinese it means celestial gate, and that is right above the Club of Orion. And in this section, it is reflected that the Lord will soon come down to both rescue and judge. So we recall how in the letters to the seven churches, the Lord warns and instructs the church of Thyatira, who is suffering under the spirit of Jezebel. He calls the people to come out from under her, after which he addresses their overcomers and the keepers of the word. They will be given the morning star. And that is found in Revelation 2, 28. And scripture holds many beautiful promises to those trusting in the Lord's overcoming power and overcoming themselves as they will eat of the tree of life that is found in Revelation 2 7 not be hurt of the second death Revelation 2 11 they will heed, eat of the hidden manna and be given a white stone and a new name Revelation 2 17 They'll be given power over the nations, Revelation 2.26, clothed in white raiment, remain in the book of life and be testified of to the Father by uh, the Lord, Revelation 3.5. They will be made a pillar in God's temple, not just stones, but pillars like uh, bearing and carrying strong burdens. They will receive God's name and that of his city, Revelation 3.12. They will be God's son and inherit all things, Revelation 21.7. And they will sit with the Lord in his throne. And this to me is a beautiful picture, which is also reflected in the constellation Cancer, where we see the son as the bridegroom in the father's house in a throne room setting right now, together with his cattle, the sheep. So that is where we are already seated, like seated in high places with the, with the Lord in his pavilion and awaiting for him to call us out and up. So in Revelation 3.20 we read, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to, to him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am sat down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So here you can see how uh, Venus is positioned at the tip of the southern horn of Taurus, Tiangguan, meaning celestial gate, just above the Club of Orion and at the foot of the bride portion in the constellation Gemini. Gemini is depicted as twins, but biblically it is a bride and a groom. So this is the location of Venus on August 4th. It is visible, really well visible, as a morning star. And let us now look at what Neowise is signaling to us. Because on August 5th and 6th, Neowise will be in Coma Bernices, hiding the virgin seated and holding the child. Uh, we explained that in the former video. Um, Neowise will have arrived at the Alpha Coma star in Coma Bernices, and that is named Diadem and also known as the Crown Star. So seeing Neowise arriving at the crown star in Coma Bernices, we're reminded of Isaiah 28, which relates to the soon to be executed judgment upon the 
spiritual drunkards of Ephraim, refer to the USA, and those ruling in Jerusalem who have made a covenant with death and hell. Discerning the USA and the rulers of Jerusalem will be judged before the other nations, while the remnant, the bride, those who have received knowledge and understanding, will be kept safe and a way to be crowned with the Lord's glory and adorned with his beauty, a new body, a new mind. We're going to have a transformed body and the mind of Christ, while Ephraim's crown of pride, liberty's crown and torch. Um, so the earthly representation is the Statue of Liberty that is tied in with the star Sirius, the false morning star, while Ephraim's star and crown will be trodden underfoot. So we read in Isaiah 28, Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower, which are on the head of the fat valleys of them that have, are overcome with wine, meaning the wine of Babylon. Behold, the Lord hath a mighty and strong one, which is which as a tempest of hail and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty waters overflowing, shall cast down to the earth with the hand. The crown of pride, the drunkards of Ephraim, shall be trodden under feet, and the glorious beauty, which is on the head of the fat valley, shall be a fading flower, and the hasty fruit before summer, which, when he that looketh upon it seeth, seeth while it is yet in his hand he eateth it up in that day the lord of hosts be for a crown of jo of glory and for a diadem of beauty unto the residue of his people so we may await await the lord's crowning and us being crowned while the world starting with ephraim and jerusalem will be suffering judgment and for a spirit of judgment to him that sitteth in judgment and for strength to them that turn the battle to the gate but they also have erred through wine and through strong drink they are out of the way the priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink they are swallowed up of wine they are out of the way through strong drink they are in vision they stumble in judgment. So this is a description of the wayward church, which is drunken on the wine of fornication. That is the wine of the harlot Babylon. We find another promising reference to the diadem or crown in Isaiah 62. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate but thou shalt be called hepzibah and thy land beulah for the lord delighteth in thee and thy land shall be married so that is an amazingly beautiful picture of the crown and the diadem so while the world has a crown of babylon a distortion of the diadem and we know that will be trodden underfoot, just having been struck by lightning. We know that we await a royal crowning and a royal diadem. So August 5th is also a picture, not just of our awaited crowning, but it is also a picture of a proposed second or what is deemed in this book a real 9-11 date with many precedents of an expected mega-ritual. A proposed sequel of the first 9-11, and we've seen that in a lot of predictive programming. We've covered that in previous articles and videos. So August 5th is related to the 
first rising of Sirius. It's called the heliacal rising, first rising before the sun, and that was indicative of the onset of the flood in ancient Egypt. Um, that is uh, commemorated by the global elite, and it is uh, a date to watch for uh, enemy activity, because we know that at the time of the rapture, there will be also be an onset of judgment. So we recall that August 5th is the day of the laying of the first cornerstone for the Statue of Liberty, and it was also the day of the groundbreaking for the World Trade Center. So the elite have hijacked this notion of crowns and diadems in very many ways. These are merely examples of two transgendered uh, people from within the royal elite playing pivotal roles in the signaling and also how the submerging of the Statue of Liberty is being brought into connection of the heavens opening and closing like a scroll. So I had some thoughts on the prophetic implications and applications of this sign of Neowise arriving at the crown of Diadem Star. And I think it's important for you to read the scriptures yourself and submit this insight to the Lord in prayer. So I believe that Neowise's arrival at the Diadem Star may, on the one hand, merely foreshadow a prejudgment and the adorning and crowning events to come, but on the other hand, it could also point to the actual timing of their initiation. I would be more uh, moved towards that second conclusion. The onset of judgment, hail, storm, floods, that is pertaining to Ephraim, and the overflowing scourge, which is pertaining to the rulers of Jerusalem, in addition to hail and water, it synchronizes with the nature and expected timing of the natural and astro catastrophes alluded to in the overpassing indignation. So we are reminded that we are kept safe from the indignation and overflowing scourge uh, because we are in the hiding place in Cancer right now. But as we come out of that hiding place, we may surely witness the onset of judgment. So the moon, um, after conjuncting with the king planet Jupiter and Saturn in the celestial golden gate, August, August 2nd, um, will reach its fullness August 3rd and 4th. So we know that the Tubi of festival was traditionally celebrated on the full moon, and on Torah calendar, that would be 4 and 5 August. On the Hebrew calendar, it is marked on August 5th, but we also see that the full moon precedes that celebration. So the full moon is also named a full sturgeon moon. That is related to the sign of Jonah, which is assigned to the wicked and adulterous who will find themselves left behind. It's also known as the corn or wheat, new, wheat moon. It takes place in the sign of Capricorn, the sacrificial or kid goat, Gedi, and the fish springing out from that sacrifice. And um, afterward, the sun will progress into the constellation Aquarius, and it will arrive in Aquarius on August the 5th. And it will still be there on August the 6th. So over here in this graph, you can see that the astronomical full moon is on August the 3rd. It will still appear full, though, on August the 4th, and maybe also even in uh, on August the 5th, because it will still be an 89% fullness. So we have a little bit of sparkle in the heavens as well, as the Perseid meteor shower is emphasizing how we, the bride, um, in this case personified in Andromeda, will be freed by Perseus, the breaker, Jesus coming to set free the bride who is still shackled to the heavens, uh, to take her up to the heavenly throne where Queen Cassiopeia and King Cepheus are located to become a queen. So with these uh, heavenly sparkles in uh, Perseus, 
I'd like to thank you for watching and I'd love to see you in the comments. Many blessings.